Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden. Welcome to View from the Garden, uh, your weekly news show where we talk about programming and tech news with a focus on JavaScript and web dev news. Now, this is the first episode. I don't know if this name is going to stick. If you have an idea for a name, feel free to throw it in the YouTube comments. Um, uh, but here we go. Uh, everything that I talk about today uh, will be linked in the description. So if you see an article you like, definitely check it out. Uh, we'll start here. So uh, January 1st, 2023 is Public Domain Day. So all works from 1927 are open to all to use. Uh, so if you go to this article, you can see books that are now in the public domain, movies, uh, musical compositions, all kinds of things that are now uh, in the public domain, no longer under copyright, and you can use for your creative endeavors. Um, uh, also, there's this article published about a rotary keyboard. So this is from uh, squidgfish.com, uh, uh, and they just have an article detailing about how they built this thing. I, is, I love little tech projects like this. So this actually, I mean, if you're too young to know what a, what a rotary what a rotary phone is essentially if you want to dial a number you have to choose the number you want and there's like one through ten and then you move it to the this little stop here and then it spins and then you choose your next number so it's kind of hilarious that they would take something like this and make it work as an actual like numpad on a computer uh, but if you look in their article they talk about how they did it they talk about the tech that they used they give a rundown of everything it's it's super interesting um this is an article that came out that's uh, the title is the best solution to burnout we've ever heard um, which ultimately talks about uh how the solution to burnout is to to uh uh, ship your products frequently. So uh, what they are saying is typically burnout comes a lot from devs who are not working on meaningful things, not working on features that are getting shipped. Um, and I actually relate to this a lot because I'm still recovering from burnout from a, from a similar situation. So this is a really great talk. They talk about that. Definitely check it out. This has nothing to do with programming, but I think it's a very important. So this is an article that talks about conversation skill essentials. Uh, now, you may just shrug this off and be like, oh, I, I know how to hold a conversation. I know how to communicate. But um, I encourage you to treat communication, treat conversation as a skill that you can get better at. Also as something that you maybe get worse at if you don't do it a lot. Uh, and so this, this article just talks about uh, things that you can do. They also talk about how uh, especially a lot of kids... Uh, during the pandemic didn't get a lot of social interaction and they may their conversation and communication skills may be lacking so this article is pretty nice definitely check it out um now let's talk about something slightly awkward there's this article uh published published by steven uh, buccini um, called eight hard truths i learned when i got laid off from my software engineering job now uh we are in a recession or potentially at the start of a recession. And I know a lot of you all might have gotten laid off or maybe you'll get laid off soon. It's sad, but there are things you can think about and ways you can deal with it. So definitely check out this article uh, that talks about the hard truths, maybe something that you can relate to, uh, especially if you're dealing with this right now. Um, on that same note, there was a list published on Reddit on r slash web dev called a Compre comprehensive list of sites to find freelance work compared by fees traffic job types and restrictions so uh if you've recently got laid off maybe maybe this is the year where you do uh freelance or consulting and so this is pretty cool because it has all of these uh job boards laid out um and you can find one where you can go potentially find freelance work freelance aka <laughs> um this was an interesting article that I found on Reddit uh, about uh, so how Safari's date picker is the cause of one third of our customer support issues. And I actually really identify with this. So if you've ever used a UI that has like a date of birth field and the developers for that UI chose to use just a regular plain old uh, date picker like this, as a user, it can be very difficult to figure out, well, how do I go back? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, right? The calendar input starts on today and I was born many years ago. So how do I get there? Um, and what they were talking about in this article is how people would actually call into tech support because they're like, I don't know how to put my birthday in. And I completely identify this I, with this. I think it's, it's not only a Safari bug. I think not a bug, like it's a usability issue. Um, I think even on Android, even on Mac, uh, you run into this where an input wants a date that's in the past, 
but you have to like figure out how to use this date picker to get back to that that former date. And so they talk about how it's an issue. I think even on iOS, uh, you have to like scroll through the the years and the dates, and you don't know you you can do that unless you actually click on the uh, the month and the year. Um, so it's a thing. Uh, the fix that they did, and actually I think this should just be the common thing for. Uh, date of birth inputs is to use number inputs. So you have a number input for month, a number input for day, and a number input for year. If you're not in the US, you could do a day, month, year, uh, or if you want to appease everyone, you could do year, day, uh, year, month, day. Regardless, uh, by using a number input, you don't have this awkward experience of like a, a date picker popping up. Um, and I also, I also think this should be the experience uh, on forms like when you're filling out like your credit card because uh, pretty often they have like credit card expiration date. I've used some UIs that pops up a, a dialogue like this and it's like, well, now I need to go into the future. Um, and then the, I've used some UIs where the month drop down is like the written out name of the month. And then I don't know how to convert the number on my card to the written out date or I have to think about it. So number inputs for, for dates in the past or dates in the future, I think are a, a good user experience that you should consider. And this article talks about that. Um, here's another article called uh, How DigitalOcean Got Millions of Monthly Readers by Understanding Developers. I identified with this because uh, constantly when I'm trying to do something on uh, like a, a, a new uh, Linux system or new Ubuntu system, I'll search the web for how to configure a firewall on Ubuntu or how to install Docker on Ubuntu. And 90% of the time, articles from DigitalOcean are at the top of the results. And I will mention are very high quality. Like it's not that they're just good at SEO and it's not just like buzzword bingo. Uh, they have, they employ really good technical writers and have really good articles that have written. So th this was interesting to me because I use them all the time, even though I actually don't have any uh, DigitalOcean virtual machines or droplets. Uh, I use other services, but I still use the DigitalOcean articles uh, for figuring out how to do things. Um, and so this article talks about uh, how they, they did their, their search engine optimization and, and, and different stuff like that. So definitely check that out. Uh, yeah, and there isn't a consensus on how to pronounce Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu? 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 I don't know. Um, this is an article on mono repos versus multi repos. I actually get this question a lot in the chat. Um, and uh, on what should I create a mono repo? Should I have multiple repos for all of my apps? And uh, this article breaks down what's the difference between the two uh, and also talks about when you would choose one over the other. Ubuntu. <laughs> um, moving into more tech related uh, things uh, from the Cloudflare blog, there is the state of HTTP in 2022, written by Mark Nottingham. Um, and this just talks about uh, initially like the history of HTTP. At this point, HTTP, the protocol that like drives all the web is over 30 years old. Um, and so it just talks about what's next, uh, the current state of affairs. It's a good read. Um, there's also this article by uh, Ryan uh, Carniato, uh, the creator of, of SolidJS, that talks about JavaScript frameworks heading into 2023. So this is a good article just to read about what's out there, what are the, what are the emerging trends in the JavaScript world. Um, so definitely check out this article by Ryan. Uh, in uh, new versions in product news, uh, not yet. Actually, I got ahead of myself. There's also this article on uh, biteofdev.com, six JavaScript projects to watch in 2023. So in the similar idea of uh, JavaScript frameworks heading into 2023, what are some projects and libraries uh, we should look at going into 2023? Turbo Repo is a mono repo tool. Tari is a tool for building desktop apps. Uh, Bun is a JavaScript runtime. Uh, Remix is a, a backend framework. Turbo Pack um, is a, a bundling tool. Uh, and then Astro is a, a, a static site generator. So this article talks about all of those things and what you should look out for in 2023. Now onto the latest version. So uh, Tamagui released version 1.0. This is actually the first time I was I have heard of Tamagui, but it is a component library for React Native and uh, React Native for web. So if you've ever worked in that ecosystem, you do know that uh, there are some some hiccups, but this library tries to uh, iron things out and, and make things work really well for web and for React Native. Um, they're a component library, but they also have things for styling and theming, uh, and they really just like solidify and unify what you might be doing if you have a code base that's w working both for the web and for React Native. So definitely check out Tamagui. Um, 
in other recent uh, versions and news, uh, AuthJS uh, has released support for Solid Start. So if you're not familiar, uh, AuthJS is an attempt to take uh, Next Auth, which is a library that was specifically for Next.js. They're taking that library and making it uh, framework agnostic so that it can work with other things. So I personally have tried to integrate this with SvelteKit, but now they just released uh, the integration with Solid Start. So Solid Start is the backend framework for, for Solid JS. So that's really good news uh, because eventually, if this all works out, essentially all the hard work that's got, gone into um, Next Auth can now be reused uh, in other frameworks and, and other frameworks are, are likely coming as well. Cool. In other releases, uh, NX, which is a model repo tool and various other things, uh, released version 15.4, uh, which has support for V4. Uh, they have a watch command. Um, Webpackless uh, Cypress. I guess uh, you can use Vite now instead of Webpack. Lots of other cool things. Definitely check out NX. I personally haven't tried NX, but it's on my list of things to try uh, the next time I reach for a mono repo tool. Um, in other news, Hyperfetch has uh, released version 3.0. Now, I'll be honest, I had no idea what Hyperfetch was, uh, but if you look at their, their docs, they describe themselves as an ambitious approach to standardizing data exchange, uh, and they're saying this is an extremely difficult but important task that we have faced. Uh, so version 3 is out. Uh, it supports HTTP, GraphQL, WebSockets, server sent events, React hooks, persistence, offline first, and many other features. So it's essentially an attempt to kind of unify all of these communication protocols so that you can just use one thing that does all those things really well. Um, so I'll definitely be checking that out as well. That's it for this week's tech news. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you're seeing this over here and wondering what it is, we're live on Twitch. So if you want to participate in the conversation, if you want to suggest news articles that uh, I, I should talk about or should point at, uh, join us over here on Twitch. Uh, and also, if there's any news that I didn't talk about, definitely uh, talk about it in the uh, YouTube comments and check the description for links to all of these articles that I mentioned. So yeah, we'll see you. Thank you for watching. Uh, see you next week. Thank you.